Economic growth can be uneven, with periods of faster or slower growth due to the unevenness of innovation and improvements in productivity. But quite separate from that, growing economies started to experience instability with a boom and bust cycle seemingly driven by financial panics. This business cycle had a predictable pattern in GDP with expansions, peaks, recessions, troughs, and then back to expansions. But the timing and length of each cycle was unpredictable, leading to long periods of heightened unemployment, which rises during recessions. The Panic of 1907 looked to be yet another financial panic to be followed by yet another recession, except this time J.P. Morgan and other bankers stepped in and provided credit markets with the critical loanable funds they needed for banks and other financial institutions to stay afloat and keep the economy running. Congress set up a committee to investigate the possibility of creating a central bank to fill that role for every panic and hopefully avoid them altogether. The quest to solve the problem of the business cycle had begun. On December 23, 1913, the Federal Reserve was established. The United States was deeply resistant to a central bank for most of its history, a fact chronicled in rhyme in Lin-Manuel Miranda's musical about Alexander Hamilton. Many today are still deeply mistrustful of the Federal Reserve, and it isn't too surprising. The Federal Reserve is, quite frankly, the most powerful bank in the world, with the ability to impact the daily lives of regular people around the entire globe, and of course, especially here in America. So, who and what are they? The Federal Reserve is a central bank, which means it acts as a bank for banks. The Fed, as it's often called, stores bank reserves. When you deposit money at a bank, the bank will keep some of it in reserve, but it will use the rest to make loans. The fraction the bank keeps in reserve is sent to the Federal Reserve for safekeeping, but is still available to the bank if they need it. By centralizing the system of reserves for all banks nationwide, the Fed took over the role of the clearinghouses, which would coordinate lending from one bank to another bank which was critical to managing a panic. The Fed was also positioned to run a check clearing system so that payments which transferred funds from one bank to another would be processed quickly and dependably because the Fed now linked all banks together. In exchange for taking over these profitable tasks for which the Fed collects fees, banks in the system are each given shares in the Federal Reserve allowing them to share in some of those profits. Banks are also given a say in who would run the Fed's regional banks. Because the Fed's operations turn a profit, it operates without any funding from the government. In fact, each year the Fed gives many tens of billions of dollars in profits to the U.S. Treasury, making it a source of revenue for the government. In order to carry out their operations, the U.S. was broken up into 12 districts, which would each be served by a regional branch of the Federal Reserve. Remember, this is all happening in 1913, so the map here reflects the distribution of the population at the time. Instead of changing the districts over time, regional banks have opened up sub-branches in places where the population ended up growing to better serve those places. So, if you wanted to open up a new bank in Phoenix, you would be required to charter through the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco, and they would keep your reserves and regulate your activities as determined by the people in charge at the Fed's headquarters in Washington, D.C. While it isn't so important now, geography was very important to the banking system back in 1913 and for a long time afterward. Reserves tended to flow out of rural banks towards city banks and eventually towards New York. When a rural area had a downturn, perhaps driven by farm yields, banks had a hard time pulling reserves back the other way fast enough 
to meet the demands of their customers, and, would, and a bank run would ensue. With this new Federal Reserve system, districts were drawn in a way to make sure rural and city banks both had easier access to reserves. The people in charge of the Federal Reserve are called the Board of Governors. There are seven seats on the Board of Governors, one of which acts as the chairperson of the Federal Reserve. Each of those people is appointed by the President of the United States and confirmed by the U.S. Senate. Each of the 12 district banks has its own president who is selected by the Board of Governors in conjunction with the private banks who were members of the Federal Reserve. So if you opened up that bank in Phoenix, you would have a little say in who serves as the president of the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. Typically, each of these people are nominated from the world of banking and have experience working in the administration of a private bank. These days, however, the most important decisions are made by a combination of these people who form the Federal Open Market Committee. The FOMC is a 12-person committee that includes the seven people on the Board of Governors, along with the president of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Since New York is the financial capital of the U.S., the New York Fed president is always on the FOMC. Then, the four other district presidents rotate each year, serving one-year terms on the committee. The Federal Open Market Committee is really important, and their decisions have massive impacts on the economy, but we will save those details for a later video. First, we need to understand why the Federal Reserve is so powerful. The Federal Reserve has been given the superpower we all wish we had. We all wish we could snap our fingers and suddenly we'd have an extra $100 billion in our bank account. The Federal Reserve can actually do that. The Fed was given a monopoly over the printing of money. It did away with that old system where each bank printed their own cash. Now, the only legal tender in the United States is the Federal Reserve note, the paper money printed by the Fed and distributed to banks. The Fed was also given regulatory powers over banks it served, which combined with the monopoly over the printing of money means that the Fed effectively controls the supply of money in the United States. The purpose of the Federal Reserve was to stabilize an increasingly unstable financial system, which was vulnerable to panics and bank runs. With a central bank at the helm, clothed in immense power, panics could be calmed with quick and decisive action. In fact, they're required by law to do it. The law which created the Fed outlined three goals for them, maximum employment, stable prices, and moderate long-term interest rates. 